Is it time for the Pelicans to trade Zion? <laughs> Molly, you know, you know, this is the best part of the season, the NBA season, the mm -hmm. play-in tournament, the postseason tournament. You know, social media is popping, Twitter is popping, your group messages is popping. And I'm in one of my group messages last mm. night. Rather and one of my good chat. brothers, right? Yeah, one of my good brothers put in a group message that his eight-year-old son, my nephew, asked him, told him while they were watching the game, hey, dad, that guy right there look like he loves to eat McDonald's. Now, this eight-year-old kid probably don't know Zion Williamson from the Easter Bunny. But what he did witness was, was that he looked at the game and saw guys on the floor that were in shape, that were athletic, that were looking like they were supposed to look, and then you see Zion Williams. So if he saw it, and we see the weight that he's put on, you damn right the organization sees it as well. And when you're dealing with a hamstring injury, okay, because I dealt with one, it doesn't take that damn long to come back. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is when you first get injured, two things are going to happen. They're go first thing is, they're going to tell you what's the plan, your recovery, your treatment, all that. The second thing that they're going to talk to you about is your nutrition, your diet. And if you're Zion Williamson, I'm pretty sure the organization probably told him time and time again, watch what you eat, make sure you go on a diet so that you can come back and you can recover faster and things of that nature. Well, they have no control over Zion once he lead the uh, trainer, the practice facility. And so when I'm looking at Zion right now, that probably could have played last night, but he didn't want to play because he said he's mentally not there. I, the word trust comes into play. And if I'm in the front office of the New Orleans Pelicans, do I trust this guy to be my franchise player? Do I trust him that I could give him the keys to my car to drive it? And the answer is no. And guess what? If we would have asked a year and a half ago how many teams are out there that would trade for Zion Williamson, it probably would have been 25 to 30. Mm -hmm. Now it's probably only about five, meaning that his value is decreasing. So if I'm the Pelicans and I'm going into this offseason, I'm actually looking to trade Zion Williams. Mm -hmm. Wendy, go ahead. Okay, so Zion has a contract like no other contract in the modern era of the NBA, all right? It is a max contract. He is going to earn a max salary next season. But he has seven weigh-ins per year in his contract that he's got to hit a benchmark number to keep that contract being guaranteed into the future. He has six different thresholds of games, uh, games played per season, that affect the guarantee of this contract. The New Orleans Pelicans are owned by the same group that owns the uh, Saints. And really, even though David Griffin has full control of this team, when it comes to business decisions, the Pelicans operate like an offshoot of an NFL team. And what Zion has is an NFL contract. And so, and by the way, Zion agreed to that contract within 48 hours of the season of the negotiation window opening last summer. They didn't even fight that hard on all of these clauses. I mean, when you look at these clauses, I'm serious. It's that long on the computer screen, all of the clauses that protect the Pelicans. And they gave him that contract perk because they were afraid of investing in him because of this situation. But the bottom line when it comes down to a trade is this. When Zion plays, the Pelicans are contenders. When he hurt that hamstring the first week of January, they were one game out of first place in the Western conference without him they're home before the playoffs officially start they can't trade him right now even with that contract as protection and get a player back that can make that big a difference so i think they have protected themselves long term and perk i think the concept of a trade for zion may be on the horizon but frankly they're so much better with him that they don't have much of a choice but to ride it out and try to hope that he can get with the constraints of this contract and really, really highly incentivized in this contract into the type of player that they need. Um, 
First of all, thank y'all both for being on the show. Thank you for looking out for me with that cold open, Kendra Perkins. Obviously, my voice is still struggling, as it was yesterday. Um, not to start any trouble, but you and Kendra Perkins, you and J.J. Reddick kind of disagree because according to J.J. Reddick, he had that hamstring injury in the past, and for some people, it does take a bit longer to heal from. So I just wanted to throw that. I just want you. That's what JJ said yesterday. Molly, you were there. You sit right next yeah. to me. That's what he said. So I just want to let you know that. Shocking news. Perk and JJ, Perk and JJ don't JJ agree not on something. Not, not disagreeing. News. Not agreeing on something. But I just want to let you know that. So let's get that out the way. Okay. Perk, I hear where you're coming from because I got to tell you something. You know, there was another star player, actually a superstar, that ended up being a four-time champion. His name was Shaquille O'Neal. He was also addicted to McDonald's. That brother loved himself some Big Macs. It's one of the things that irritated the hell out of Kobe Bryant. He loved himself some Big Macs. It drove Kobe crazy. But that's a different subject for another day. Because unlike, unlike Zion, Shaq was on the court and being the dominant force that we all expected him to be. Zion is mm -hmm. not doing that. That is the difference. Um, he can look. And, and the fact that you quickly agreed to a contract like Wendy just highlighted, that stipulated weight clauses in it should show you and you should embrace that as an indictment against you. It's not quite as bad as what Colin Murray purportedly capitulated to with the Arizona Cardinals in the National Football League, but it's pretty damn close. When they got to put weight clauses in your contract, they got to find some way to hold you accountable because they don't trust that you are going to be self-accountable. So that's something for Zion to look at when he looks in the mirror. The Western Conference playoffs look to be rounding into form with Minnesota and Oklahoma City fighting for that eighth and final playoff spot tomorrow night. The rest of the matchups are set as the Warriors begin their repeat campaign against the Kings and the Grizzlies take on the Lakers and the Phoenix Suns matchup with the Clippers. Wendy, which team goes the furthest? Lakers, Warriors, or Suns? Yeah, uh, I'm having a hard time not seeing the Warriors with with the draw that they have and the fact that they have their whole team. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't seen Wiggins, although Steve Kerr yesterday was effusive about how Wiggins looked in the scrimmage. Um, that's so important. Clay has been playing great. Steph, Steph, obviously his resume is unimpeachable. He killed... The, the, the Kings in the regular season. He shot 58% against them. They're not a strong defensive team. He kills them. Um, I acknowledge that the Suns, I've spent a ton of time around the Suns this year. I will be on a plane for Phoenix this weekend. I'm a believer that the Suns could make this happen, but the Warriors are more complete. And I, I can't dismiss 11 and 30 on the road. I, I can't dismiss their, their defensive intensity effort on the road. But I also can't dismiss that that team's lineup, their depth, their experience, their draw, their travel window. The Lakers got to fly four hours between these cities. The, 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 the Warriors got to go 90 minutes. I mean, I'm having a hard time not looking at the Warriors as having the inside track, to be honest. I'm going with the Los Angeles Lakers. I said that a couple of days ago, and I'm we standing know. by it. When I look at when I look at Anthony Davis, okay, when I look at a guy, I believe he was 16th or 17th this year in scoring, number one in rebounding, I believe number four or five in block shots. See, here's the thing about AD, and I said this on this show. When LeBron James went out, I said Anthony Davis has a golden opportunity to change the narrative about himself and enter the same conversation again with likes of Giannis, Jokic, and Embiid. And he has done just that, okay? And when you have this Anthony Davis that's affecting both ends of the floor, he has been the best player in the Western Conference the second part of the season. That's why he just got Western Conference Player of the Month, because he's been balling out of control. And when you have a LeBron James, especially the LeBron James that we've been seeing since he came back since the ankle injury, that is a problem. And again, iron sharpens iron. When you have a guy like D'Angelo Russell that struggled in the play-in tournament like he did, and you're Darvin Ham, and you can look down the bench and say, hey, then the shooter, come on here, bro. I'm going to ride with you from the middle of the third all the way through OT. 
and he helped be that third option, then you know you got something because you need depth. When you can roll with Rui Hachimara and leave Jared Vanderbilt on the bench, that means you got depth. When you have a guy like Malik Beasley that's coming in off the bench that could light you up for 20, you have depth. That's what the Lakers have. They have one of the top duos in the league in LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They're going against a Memphis Grizzlies team that is missing Steven Adams and Brandon Clark that are huge pieces for them. So when I look at their road to get to it and the way that they're playing, I'm going with the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, you keep on going on with them, my brother. Right on down the hill, okay? Because they're going down. All right? Now, 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 now I, 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 I believe Memphis is going to beat them because I believe Memphis is the better team. But it wouldn't surprise me if the Lakers pulled that off. And certainly I'm not mad because you all know I would rather be in Southern California than Memphis, Tennessee, even though I'm not throwing any shade on Memphis. Nice city. It's just that they got to remember that Elvis is dead and move on, okay? But Southern California is lovely. Now, let me say this. Now, let me say this. It's, it's important. Listen, there's billboards up of Elvis. I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating. Y'all been to Memphis. There's still billboards of Elvis. They, they got to stop. They really, really do. Now, let's move on. The Golden State Warriors are an entirely different matter, Kendrick Perkins. And so are the Phoenix Suns. I can't listen. When I think about KD and Devin Booker, Lord have mercy. The point guard that is CP3. I'm not dismissing that. DeAndre Ayton is not a scrub. But everything that you've said, about L.A.'s defense. Kendrick Perkins, I do believe you would concede they ain't a damn soul on the Los Angeles Lakers that got an answer for Kevin Durant. I think you know better than that. Ain't a damn soul on the Lakers that got an answer for Kevin Durant. And Devin Booker's going to get his too. But let me go to the Golden State Warriors because they were my preseason pick, obviously. Lost a lot of faith in them with the injuries, with their inability to win on the road. Um... But I can't, I got to admit, as these playoffs draw, uh, are here now and I've seen their seating and the road, I got to tell you, I, I, I think it's possible. I think it's, I think it's, listen, I'm up and down, vacillate back and forth between them and Phoenix as about whether or not Golden State going back to the finals. I'm not even considering anybody else anymore. It comes down to me because of their draw between Golden State and Phoenix. I'm not considering the Lakers anymore. I'm not considering the Clippers. I'm not considering Denver, no disrespect. I'm not, I'm not considering any of them knocking off Phoenix and Golden State. And I'm leaning more towards Golden State than Phoenix because I love the fact that they're all back together. That's how I feel about it right now, bro. I can't front. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.